Hello and welcome back to our series of videos on mediation, particularly mediation involving multiple predictors, a single mediator, and a single outcome variable. For part two, I will now be discussing how to convert the JASP output that we have produced in the previous video into an APA formatted tables. But before we continue, again, I'm inviting everyone to please subscribe to my channel. About 90% of the people who are watching these tutorials and videos are not subscribed. So please join the 10% who are and help me grow the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so as you can see, so these are the tables that we have made based on the JASP output. So I'll run through what I have done here. So the first one is our correlation matrix. So this is a combination essentially of our output from the descriptives, particularly the mean and standard deviation values, and of course our correlation coefficients from the correlation that we have run. When I do these tables, I have to create the tables from the ground up. I don't copy paste the tables from JASP to the Word because the tables from JASP is quite complicated and I just have to kind of uh, recreate them from the ground up. So some reminders when it comes to tables. So there has to be a table number. Uh, the table number is in bold face and then the table title in upper and lower cases and the table title is in italics. So what we can see here is a correlation matrix wherein we have the variables here in the left column followed by the values pertaining to their averages or means and then their standard deviation values. So as you can see, all of the values are centered. The headers are not in boldface. They're just in regular font type. And then you will notice that instead of saying math proficiency, belongingness, disciplinary climate, which might take a lot of space, I have labeled these headers with numbers which correspond to these variables. But you will notice that I have seven variables here, but only six columns. That's because the seven column is practically blank. Other things that you have to remember when preparing a table is that we make sure that the decimal places are consistent. So if we want our values to be two decimal places, so everything has to be within two decimal places. Another thing that you will notice is that some values have a lead zero, such as this, while others do not have a lead zero. Uh, and the rule is that for values that cannot exceed one, such as correlation coefficients, we do not put a lead zero. But for these values, I think it's possible for them to exceed one. So there are lead zeros in these values. Uh, and then make sure that these are centered. Okay. The only thing that is not centered is basically the content of the first row, but even the header is centered. So where did I get this from? So again, the mean and standard deviation values, I got it from our first output, mean and standard deviation values. But you can see here that the JASP output is three decimal places, so I had to round them into two decimal places. You will also notice that sex does not have a mean and standard deviation because of course, it doesn't make sense for sex to have a mean and standard deviation value. And then the next one is table two, which is the result of the test of mediation. So you can see here that I have essentially divided the table into several segments, one for the total effect. So the total effect essentially talks about the essentially shows the influence of belongingness, disciplinary climate, teacher support on math proficiency, as well as the influence of the control variables on math proficiency. In the model, essentially, these are our total effects. And then uh, the indirect effects. So these are the effects of our predictors on math proficiency as explained by our mediator. So in the model, these would be our indirect effects. So belongingness, disciplinary climate, predicting math proficiency, as explained by math engagement. And then the specific path coefficients. So these are just details with regard to the specific paths. For example, uh, this path from belongingness to math engagement, this path 
from disciplinary climate to math engagement, this path from teacher support to math engagement, and lastly, from math engagement to math proficiency. And then the direct effects. So these are the influence or the effect of belongingness, disciplinary climate, and teacher support on math proficiency after accounting for the effect of the mediator. To illustrate, these would be the direct effect. So the effect of belongingness, disciplinary climate, and teacher support on math proficiency after accounting for what math engagement can explain. And as with a typical uh, regression table, we have here B, which is the notation for the unstandardized regression coefficient, SE for the standard error, beta for the standardized regression coefficients, the Z-score, uh, which essentially evaluates whether our regression coefficients are significantly different from zero, uh, and then if these z values are significant, I have just flagged them using asterisks. We have our legend here, and then these confidence intervals are the confidence intervals around our unstandardized regression coefficients, which further supports our p values. So for as long as there is no zero between this and this, so essentially for as long as uh, both values are both positive or both values are both negative, then zero is not within this range, then that means to say that that is further support for the significance of the coefficient of the pathway. So other things that I forgot to tell you a while ago, so make sure that the statistical notations that are non-Greek letters are in italics, such as B, S, E, Z, P is in italics, but for statistical notations that are Greek, such as beta, do we have anything here? Uh, none. So this is our only Greek letter statistical notations. They are not in italics. Mean and SD, they're non-Greek, so they're also in italics. So where did I got these from? So these total effects and the coefficients, I got it from this output, so the one that is labeled total effect. So essentially, those values, I got it from, from here. I just did some rearrangement, particularly I placed the standardized regression coefficients in between standard error and Z values because typically that's what I see in published journals. Okay, and then instead of putting another column for the p-values, I just created a legend. Uh, the reason is because I don't have much space and this is already font size 11 and I don't, wanna, I don't want to have a font size anything smaller than 11. And then for the indirect effect, I got these results from uh, the section labeled indirect effect, particularly these values, okay? And then for the, the specific path coefficients that describes the indirect effect, I got it from the path coefficients. So here we have belongingness, predicting math engagement, disciplinary climate, predicting math engagement, teacher support, predicting math engagement, and math engagement, predicting math proficiency. So these are the only specific math coefficients that we will be needing for the table. And then finally, the last part of the table is the direct effects. So again, these are the effects of the predictor variables on the outcome variable after accounting for the mediation. So I got that from uh, these results here. All right, so I think that's it. No, uh, so this is how the APA formatted table looks like. Uh, you will also notice that I have created a note section here that basically summarizes what these terms mean. So sense of belongingness for belong, a disciplinary climate for disclaim and so forth and so on. Okay, so I hope that this has been useful in your attempt to prepare your own APA formatted tables. Again, there are other possible ways of presenting these results, but for me, 
this is my style of presenting these results. And this particular style is quite similar to what I see in published materials. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something. Uh, and in the next video, I will talk about how to write a report for our particular results. So I have the report here prepared. So I will discuss this in the next video. The link to that video is somewhere in the corners of this particular screen. So thank you very much. If you reached this particular part of the tutorial of the lesson, thank you. And again, I'm inviting you to subscribe if you haven't had.